for devotions, I've been reading the story of Jacob um, in the in the book of Genesis, and uh, and I, I found that this passage really struck me here today, and so I just want to share that with you. Uh, so we're going to look at, at Genesis chapter 32, starting at verse 9. It says, Then Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, Lord, you who have said to me, Go back to your country and your relatives, and I will make you prosper. You see, Jacob has been living now for 20 years um, in the land of Laban. He's been there working, and he married uh, Rachel and Leah, and um, and so he's begun to prosper. He's beginning to, to gain this wealth. And now God is calling him to go back to his home country. And so Jacob is setting off to go do that now. He's going to head back towards his own com- country where he feels God is calling him and where God has told him that he will prosper. And Jacob, in his humility, says, I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. I, have only, I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan but now I become two camps. See, Jacob here now, he, he admits to God, he says, I had nothing. I, had not, I only had my staff when I crossed this Jordan. And, and now he says that he's got so much. He has been blessed and, and God has been so faithful to Jacob. And so Jacob is grateful for that. Now what I find really interesting here is that Jacob is headed to where he feels God is calling him, where he where God said he will make him prosper, and yet Jacob's now going to come to a moment where he is terrified. You see, he says he's been split up into two camps because he's about to, to run in to his brother Esau. And you need to know a little bit about the story of Jacob and Esau, and, and there's some tension there as Jacob first, he, he scammed Esau for his birthright. As Esau was the older brother, he was... He had the birthright, and yet Jacob tricked him into trading it for a bowl of soup. Later, uh, the fa- their father Isaac had, had sent Esau out into the, the, the fields to go hunt some game and, and bring back this stew. And, and he says, and when you come back, I will bless you. Well, Jacob then cheats Esau out of that blessing by going and making his own stew his own stew and and bringing it to his father and receiving the blessing that Esau was supposed to receive. And so Jacob has has scammed and and cheated his brother Esau. And now he finds himself terrified, terrified to run into his brother. And and so he has split his camp into two, thinking that as he runs into his brother, his brother might, out of revenge, try to just wipe him out and, and kill all his people. And so he says, at least if we're in two camps, then if Esau attacks us, the other half can run away and can be safe. And so Jacob here is headed towards where God is calling him, where God says he will prosper. And yet Jacob is terrified. He says, save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me and also the mothers with their children. But you have said, I will surely make you prosper and will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. Jacob here is praying out to God, saying, God, I see where you're calling me to go. But I also know that it is not going to be easy right now. My brother stands between us and where, where you're calling me to go. And because of my past history, because of past mistakes, I'm terrified of what might happen. And yet, Jacob goes faithfully. He pursues where God is calling him, and he trusts that God's going to protect him. Now, this story ends up really great. Esau has has forgiven Jacob and been gracious to him. And, And so in that, God has protected Jacob once again. He has protected his promise to go and make him prosper. My thought for us here today is, where's God calling us? And are there things standing between us and, and where God is calling us that, that just terrify us? Are they, are they fearful to us? Are, are they maybe a, a cause because of something in our past? And, and do we just need to lay that before God? Trust in him and say, God, I believe you're calling me down this path. Protect me and keep me safe. Save me, O Lord.
Amen.